Page 12. Anyone for tic-tac-toe? Here we get a whole lot of staccatos. I'll talk about those in a minute. But let's take this one hand at a time. Right hand first. Now this is in 4-4 time. And we're starting out in the right hand. You see your third finger's on E. That puts you here. You're in C position. Now watch out for this rest. So it got a rest on beat 1. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. As I said, forget the staccatos right now. Let's just get the notes and the fingering and all that first, and the rhythms. Next measure is the third measure. It's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's pretty much it for this page. Let's go over to page 13 at the top. You have a D and an F sharp. We're going to use the same finger for the F for the F sharp. Just come up here. And remember accidentals now, that accidental, that sharp sign applies for the rest of the measure. So all of those F's in that measure are sharp. So it's all You've got three of them there. Go down to the next line, third measure over, where that has the big slur. That's F sharps. They're both F sharps here. That's about it for the right hand. I mean, the rest of it you've had. Left hand. It's Thumb is on C here, so you're on here, in this position. You'd say it's an F position, but actually when you put the hands together, it ends up being middle C position, here, where the thumbs are sharing middle C. So you have a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then a B, one, two, three, four. you get the not a lot going on there. Let's go over to page 13. At the top, you have an A and a C at the same time. One, two, three, four, and then a G and a B. One, two, three, four, and then here. So just make sure you can say the names of these notes, and I'd prefer you read them rather than me playing it for you. Put the hands together here, middle C position. It's one, two, three, four, one. Together. So when you put them together, the hands are kind of doing that. Okay. Let's go to the top 13. Now we have these the A and the C and a D and an F. When I figure out these things, when I get a lot of notes at one time, I just start at the bottom note and I just figure it out one note at a time going up. So it's like an A and a C and a D and an F sharp. For that measure, one, two, three. That just sounds wonderful. You gotta love it. You know you do. It's early in the morning for me, this is not what I need to hear. Next measure, you have a G and a B and a D and a G here. Oh, that's much better. It didn't sound quite so different. Next measure, now watch out. You got quarter notes in the left hand, but in the right hand, you got these rests and then the. Uh, one, you just have to take that out very carefully and work that out. Go down to the next line, third measure over where the big slur is. Here. You got a whole note in the left hand. And here. So let's talk about that a little bit. In the right hand, you have F sharps in that one measure. But in the next measure, that's an F natural. Remember, the sharp sound only applies for that measure, nothing else. So that's an F natural in the next measure. Watch out there. In the left hand, you have the A and the C whole note, and then in the next measure, you got a G and a B. Can you connect them and get them down at the same time? That's hard to do. Do the best you can, but eventually you need to be able to do that. Don't lift up and do that, please, if, if you can help it. So it's here. measure that is a quarter note so lift that left hand up when you play that F natural this hand comes up then go down to the bottom last measure you have a half note in the right hand and a quarter note and a rest and that nonsense at there at that last if they tell you it's the lowest C on your piano you just go all the way down, depending on how big your keyboard is. Go all the way down to the bottom C you've got and play that. Whatever.
whatever it is. In music, you'll see this note occasionally, not very often. And they won't tell you what the note name is. They're being nice to you here. Just play that. That's a C. You have to figure it out. Hopefully, if you understand how to read music, that's not hard to do. You can figure it out. And when I run across this kind of thing in music, I can't just look at those ledger lines and know how many there are and know, how, know that note. I don't know what that note is. After playing piano for millions of years and reading lots and lots of music, I can't just look at that note and know what it is. There's too many ledger lines. So what I do when I run across it in music is I figure it out once, take a pencil, and I'll write in the note name. Right here it would be a C. And that way when I run across it, when I'm practicing it, and, and I don't have to figure it out again. I can just, okay, I wrote, I know what it is. It's a C. I wrote, I wrote it in. So I can, and that's how I do it. Figure it out once and write in the note name. Now, I think you ought to be able to go at least three ledger lines because you can glance at three ledger lines and know what the, you can see them. You know there's three of them just glancing. You don't have to count them. But when it gets beyond that, you have to kind of start counting as you get, I'm not sure how many there are. So in my opinion, you should memorize at least three ledger lines above or below either step, either cliff. Eventually. Maybe not right now, but eventually. So, let's figure out that note. We know it's a C, but let's look at it anyway. Low, low C here is two ledger lines. You should just know that. That's a C. The three ledger lines is an A. Four it would be an F. See, it's every other note. And then five would be a D. And that note is under the fifth one, which would be a C. And then once I figured it out, once I counted it out like that, then I write it in. Well, they wrote it in for you, so you don't need to. Now, once we got the notes and the rhythm sort of working, and if you're having any hesitations anywhere, try and work them out. It's kind of important that it be able to flow from beginning to end, straight through, beat goes on, no hesitations, no nothing. Just phew. Now we can go back and add the articulation. Now that means the staccatos and the slurs and the accents and that stuff. So nice light wrist. You're going to hinge at the wrist. You don't have to come way up. I exaggerate it for the camera. It's just a little, little motion, but that's what it is. It's short. And I, I push down and bounce off the keys each time. So I'm on the key. I push down and bounce off. And then I go back and put it on the key. And I push down again and again. Now, if you're going real fast, you can't do that. You gotta, you have to keep doing this, and that's kind of dangerous. Don't, don't. You don't want a lot of motion if you do that. You're liable to miss notes. But here, you got time. You put it on the key. You push down and bounce off, and then put it back on the key again before you play the next one, like so. So here it's C, and I put it on there before I even play this one. I'm there. That's not staccato. Then the next one, like so. Let's go over to page 13. Now these are staccatos and accents. We're going to play it a little louder than we would normally play it, and I'll get to normally playing it in a minute. It's just, just accents. No, it's a, it's both together. No, I don't need that. It's a little better. It's not just staccatos. Then when you get to the next line, third measure over what the slur is. Now this is all smooth and connected. And then staccato. You get down to the bottom, last measure. The right hand is two beats. Two. And right when you play that C, the right hand comes up. Like that. And the right hand, uh, the left hand is just a... You can't hardly see it, but it's, it's just a boom. Um, yeah. Now we can add the dynamics. Well, it starts out moderately loud. It's going to have to be pretty much both hands here. You'll have to decide what moderately loud is. It's between moderate and loud. It's somewhere in there. And it'll change from time to time and piano to piano or whatever it is. 
but when you get on top of page 13 now this is loud so it's going to be louder than you were plus it's accented so now it's actually going up to more like very loud now it's not really it's and now the accents go away so now it's just loud like so and the next line not soft it's like an echo of what you just did it's just no accents or nothing, it's just soft. Not smooth, but soft. Now you're back to moderately loud like you were at the beginning. You stay that way for the rest of them. So add the dynamics, they, they make a huge difference. Speed wise, it's Allegro Moderato. Well, that's moderately fast. We're back to this moderately stuff. It's sort of fast. It's, if you were gonna sing it, how fast would you sing it? If you go that fast, you don't have time to put your hands on the keys and bounce off for the staccatos. You have to do this on the staccatos. You're, you're kind of hitting the keys almost. Don't hit them hard. Don't want to hurt them. Because there just isn't time for that. But don't come way up. Just keep it a small motion. You learn it. Get it to where you can play it through without any hesitations or nothing. And then come back. Let's play it together very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Make sure you have those correct. You should be playing the same note I'm playing at the same time I'm playing it. I'm not going to do any dynamics. Let's just play it through and check all that. You can do all the other stuff on your own. I'll give us four counts. One, two, ready, go. Rest. 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 